When we think of a teacher, oftentimes we think of someone who is more knowledgeable or wiser than ourselves. Because after all, those are the people we have something to learn from. Those are the people we have something to gain from. They're the people that are most suited to explain concepts to us or to offer us valuable advice that we can actually apply into our lives. So it may come off as an odd idea that there is something we can learn from artificial intelligence. Because after all, artificial intelligence is taught how to learn by none other than us, humans. And in this sense, it's not possible for them to be more knowledgeable than us or wiser than us. So what is there that we can learn from them? Babies learn through a process of assimilation and accommodation. When a child is shown a photo of a dog and told that it is in fact a dog, the child picks up on the characteristics that make it a dog, such as the dog's four legs. However, when the child comes across another four-legged creature that isn't a dog, such as a cat, the child has to learn to accommodate its original understanding of four-legged creatures to include both dogs and cats. In the same way, machines can learn through such a method. In deep learning, there's a type of learning called supervised learning, in which an artificial intelligence model is given sets of inputs and expected outputs. Eventually, the model is able to pick up on the characteristics that lead each input to become an unique output, and is able to predict outputs for novel inputs with an error rate that verges on that of zero. So if we learn in the exact same way as artificial intelligence, what is there for us to learn from them? Well, something we have been learning recently is how our own brains work. In 1951, Marvin Minsky borrowed ideas from physiologist Ivan Pavlov to create a computer that would be able to traverse virtual mazes, any maze. In doing so, he applied the ideas of reinforcement learning, which is learning that centralizes around the reinforcement of behaviors. For example, when the computer performed an action that led it closer to its goal, in this case, the end of the maze, the computer would be rewarded. And when the computer performed an action that led it further from its goal, the computer would instead be punished. Eventually, the computer would be able to make all the right decisions that lead it out of the maze in the most efficient way possible. In the same way, humans and animals alike can learn through reinforcement. However, at that time, neuroscientists had yet to discover the mechanisms in the human brain that allowed us to learn through such a way. But thanks to developments in machine learning, they've been able to shed light on those mysteries quite recently. And today, breakthroughs in machine learning and neuroscience occur hand in hand. Of course, this is great and all, but why does it matter to someone like me? Why does it matter to the average Joe whose knowledge that we can learn through reinforcement isn't going to make our lives any better? It isn't going to enable me to learn any more efficiently than I already am. So why does it matter to people like us? Well, something else that artificial intelligence can teach us, which I find much more important than anything can ever reveal about our biologies, is an approach that we should all take into our learning. My friend Sam recently didn't do very well on his AP Calculus exam. And that doesn't come off as a surprise to me. Not because Sam isn't smart. In fact, Sam is very smart. But I don't find it surprising because AP Calculus is hard. It's not just adding fractions like you do in Math 9 or drawing lines on a Cartesian plane like you do in Pre-Calculus 12. AP Calculus has many, many concepts that take a long time to understand and comprehend. The formulas aren't plug and chug. The formulas you have to actually grasp and understand in order to apply effectively into your problem solving. So it's no big surprise that a human doesn't do well on their AP Calculus exam. But what would have surprised me is if a machine that was trained in calculus 
didn't do well on that same exam. Why is that? Why do I have more faith in the machine than I do in my friend? Well, it boils down to a few reasons. When we think about it, there are only really two reasons we make mistakes. Because of a lack of understanding and because of a lack of practice. Of course, Sam might argue that his mistakes were careless and it was just a stroke of misfortune that led him to factoring out the negative sign when he shouldn't have. But if you think about it, if Sam had made that same mistake in his practice, it's much more likely that he would have ensured he didn't make that mistake again during his test because he would have been looking for that mistake. In fact, if Sam had done every single problem possible, using every single method existing, making every single mistake possible, but most importantly, understanding why he made each mistake each time afterwards, I can guarantee Sam that his error rate on any subsequent test would verge on that of zero. You may already see where I'm going with this, but computers are able to achieve such error rates because they learn in a similar way. Because computers don't have the capabilities to create shortcuts in learning like we do, they must learn through a very algorithmic process. And while it isn't exactly the same as doing every single problem you can and making every single mistake there is to make, it's somewhat similar to that. For example, one way that computers search through a large set of numbers for just one number is by going through each number individually and checking if it's the number they want. They'll look at the first number. Is this the number they want? If it's not, they move to the second number, the third number, the fourth number, until they eventually arrive at the number they want. And if that number isn't in the set at all, it'll take them however many iterations that are in the set in order to actually finally realize that that number wasn't there to begin with. As you can imagine, this process begins to take a very, very long time, especially when the sets of numbers are billions. But it provides the computer with something a lot of us don't achieve in our learning. It provides the computer with absolute certainty in its final answer. You see, Sam didn't try everything, and while that isn't his fault, he might not have had enough time or enough practice problems to practice with, it's still the ultimate reason that Sam made mistakes on his test and a computer wouldn't have. But the takeaway here isn't to learn like a computer and do every single problem possible and make every single mistake possible. No, that would take far too much time, much more time than any of us, to be frank, have time for. The takeaway here instead is for us to try to achieve what the computer gains through such a process. It's for us to try to achieve a deeper understanding in our learning. What we learn from artificial intelligence isn't a new and more efficient way to learn. Instead, what we learn is something that a lot of us already know we should be aiming for. It's a goal to learning that we, a lot of us, have forgotten. The goal of mastery. In this age where speed and convenience have become so mainstream, Mastery is often forgotten. We jump from subject to subject, trying to get a taste of every single one of them, but never actually stopping to savor the flavors of any of them. We all try to become well-rounded jacks of all trades, but in the end, we end up as the master of none. Of course, it's a good idea to try to dip your feet in the waters of every single opportunity, to get a feel for what is right for you. But what we as learners must remember is that learning isn't about accumulating a vast amount of trivial facts. Learning is about sticking to something long enough that we can learn enough about it so we can actually apply what we've learned into our lives and others' lives. Without mastery, we as a society lose the power of knowledge because just simply knowing is the same as not knowing at all. What computers do so well is that they master the material given to them. When they learn, they truly learn. 
they search for every single minute discrepancy that might make up the nuance of an output of 0 0.1 versus the output of 0 0.11. They scrutinize the data they're presented with and ensure they've latched on to every single little detail before moving on to anything else in order to gain the idea of the bigger picture and the smaller picture and any other subsequent pictures shown to them. If you look at almost any professional artificial intelligence model, it's very likely that their accuracy rates are going to be above 90%. And it's because that machines have the innate drive to master things. What we as learners must do is try to mimic that drive. When we learn new math formulas, consider where they come from, how are they derived? How can we most effectively apply them into our problem solving? When we learn psychology, make connections with the people around you. How do they behave? And the concepts you've been learning in class. When we read Shakespeare, consider how he builds his plots, his characters, and how you can apply that into your own writing. Even when we learn something like hitting a tennis ball, consider how you should ang angle your racket in order to achieve the maximum velocity with the least amount of energy expended possible. It appears that although we create these machines and we teach them how to learn, they still have a thing or two to teach us about learning. Once we start to strive for mastery, I can't even imagine where we'll be able to go. Because once we start to strive for this complete, thorough understanding in everything we do, I believe that humanity's potential will become boundless. Thank you.